Welcome to Crema Media. I'm Natasha Udendor. With me in studio is the Deputy Minister of Telecommunications and Postal Services here to outline the highlights of this year's budget vote. Welcome. Uh, thank you very much for having me, Natasha. Thanks. Just looking at um, broadband this year seems to be a key feature um, of the department during the vote. Can you tell me more about the plans you have for, for the next year? Well, you know, it starts with the announcement which was made by the president that um, in terms of the NDP by 2020, uh, 20 South Africans should all have access to, uh, they should be 100% broadband penetration and 70% of our government departments by uh, we should be having at least um, should be connected electronically so really with those challenges the question was where are we what's the problem and also you know the r recent ratings of the world economic forum where we have dropped uh, to the lower level from seven uh, from 70 to 75. So the question really was, what do we do? The, then the announcement was that let's prioritize broadband rollout to the most vulnerable eight districts, which are really in most of our provinces, except Johannesburg and the Western Cape. That, that's where the poorest of the poor. Hence, broadband rollout is a priority. It's about the bigger picture of inclusion, especially economic inclusion, access to information, and normalizing um, our, uh, our societies. Okay, but going forward, I mean, there's a lot of challenges in actually getting the broadband to the rural areas, for example. I mean, there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to go into play. There's a lot of skills development and awareness that needs to go into play. What is the department doing to try and get it to the, the least accessible places in South Africa? Well, you know, the priority districts which have been excluded. Remember, though, we, we, we mustn't be too um, critical because the golden cities are connected already. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so there are lessons which have been learned in terms of capabilities, project management, technical know-how. We are already there. We know what needs to be done. On the government side, one of the things we spoke about was that we are finalizing the policy which will guide the regulator as to how to assist from a spectrum point of view, because that's what the private sector is really looking for, mm -hmm. that we need, we need room. We need to be able to do what we want to do. We want to support government. So they were happy to know that on the government side as well we we are agitating and finalizing the policies which will guide the regulator as to how to assist them but also from a budget point of view it's infrastructure rollout and simultaneously we are capacitating our efforts in terms of creating an e-society through our school labs, which initially were meant for schools, but the agencies, we were showing them how we tend to work at a local level, mm -hmm. are extending that to clinics for e-health, to uh, municipalities, and to uh, other social agencies like you, women's rights organization and so on. So it's a, it's a two-pronged approach where there's broadband rollout and sometimes other technologies assisting government to begin to connect so that people could uh, be comfortable in, 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 in using the, the technologies mm. and learning. Also, that's a big part. Mm. Like we have learned in the schools that where teachers are not capacitated, even the equipments we give them, they put them aside. So it's more than just distributing them, but it's also ensuring that they are trained to use them to access information and through Wi-Fi, they be able to access big data. And that's another thing which is really helping us a lot, that besides 
broadband rollout, but there are other possibilities where people can uh, access internet. Okay, and then just looking to other areas of the budget this year, and um, transformation has also played a very important role. Can you tell me where we are in this in this industry? Well, in the ICTs, we have this uh, BE charter, mm. which we are finalizing. So that, for me, will look uh, more in areas of ownership. But the big issue that we spoke about yesterday is the issue of youth inclusion. Mm. That if we roll out our broadband to communities, we were saying we need to almost revive the two song centers, localized structures where there will be consolidated effort in terms of skilling people. You know, we were looking at what we are trying to do. We took one project, the Techno Girls, mm -hmm. which is a developed, well developed, uh, it is a well developed model uh, with the assistance of the UN. You can crunch numbers. If companies take over the period of three years, girl children to school, uh, to their companies, place them with the clear objectives of assisting them to choose their career, to choose the institution where they learn financial assistance, then during the 12th year, they are, last year, they are ready to apply and to go to an institution. So those are things we are saying. From these districts, let's not do one thing just to say broadband roll out. We begin the inclusion uh, model. I mean, if you take a bigger companies and they are able to take 1,000 from each center, it means uh, out of the seven, you can say over a period of three years, we'll have um, about 7,000. I'm just talking about one. If telecom were to do that, and we're appealing to, to them to, to really uh, accelerate whatever they are doing, go mm -hmm. beyond compliance of taking two or three. We started with Celsi saying, take a girl child to work. But through the, this program, they can take a meaningful number. It means then we have a number of people who will be engineers, will start doing uh, BSc in computer science. And that's a transformation journey over a three year period. You can see the numbers changing at a university. But with a huge percentage of young people, especially the NEET group, mm. neither in education, nor employment, nor training, which Minister Zamanda is always appealing and pleading for. If you look at all these districts, when we say they are poor, they are poor because people are not employed. They are poor people are because people don't have the skills. So we are saying to our companies, they have enterprise units. In, instead of conveniently looking at the golden cities, it's easy to go to Soweto for MTN or Vodacom. Mm -hmm. If they go to those districts and say, through our enterprise development, we'll use these ICT hubs at a district level and identify young people and train them and make sure that they enter the value chain through the whatever product they would have been assisted them to, to produce. Then again, you begin to see realistically in roles of social, mm. socio-economic transformation. Localized, intense, measurable. SMMEs, same thing. Instead of looking around, coming across one known person and say, oh, you know, we'll assist you to form a small, medium company. Going to the very difficult remote areas, empowering a group of women, either through a cooperative or a small, business. Again, those are transformation agendas. And of course, I think companies have always been able to identify powerful people and give them shares mm -hmm. at a sure shareholding level. That hasn't had much impact, but we value that as well because we do need people who will be the hub of transformation, hopefully, once they've got those <laughs> shares. But we are consolidating we believe, especially the youth, we believe if we can capture as many of them as possible. I'm saying that because ICTs by nature attracts young people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's attractive, it's fancy, it's an end thing. 
to play around with gadgets if we can uh, capitalize on that using our own resources as well we will it will help in terms of the GDP of this country but also just normalizing our societies and not to have too many young people who get attracted to protests and drugs and all the social ills mm -hmm. uh, that uh, are in society today. Okay, and just looking at the policy, the, the charter, um, you say you're busy finalizing it. Uh, do you have any timeline on when that will actually be published? Well, as far as I know, they are at the last stage of, okay. of, of um, talking to social partners. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's a parliamentary mm -hmm. process. On the department side, when we came on board last year, half the work was done. We had to strengthen other areas besides shareholding. Like, like gender, we, I mean, I do believe we have to make it a deliberate, uh, measurable category mm -hmm. besides, you, you know, because when you say black, wah, 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 again, you are talking about black men. Mm -hmm. That's what practice is showing us now, that we mustn't assume that if people, they come as people who have been excluded, they will be sensitive to other categories like women, like the disabled, like people who live in rural areas. So sometimes black will, has just benefited the guys in the golden cities, you know. Perfect. Um, I think that's it. Unless you want, is there anything else that you want to add or? Well, uh, we also, you know, we were confident that uh, the post office is coming alive <laughs> and the unions support us, you know, and they keep on, I mean, there's no signed agreement, but really they are saying they are behind us, they are behind the strategy, but of course they don't agree with <laughs> losing jobs. Yeah. That one is not, of course we are comfortable with that. We do believe they are, they, you know, with the digital future, where there'll be set of top boxes, and we do believe that many of them can be retrained and skilled to assist even uh, to support what we are doing in the poor districts that we will be focusing upon. So, you know, the atmosphere was not bad. Mm, fantastic, thank you very much. Yeah, okay, thank you. Right. Thank you for having us. Thanks, and that is a roundup of the Department of Telecommunications and Postal Services budget.